again. Welcome back into my kitchen, Military Way Station over here in Germany. Um, when I started the Philadelphia Cream Cheese Contest, I had a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of friends, you know, what should I make, you know? And I'm brainstorming, and my Not Your Mama's Meatloaf came up over and over again. And I have a lot of friends who have allergies. They have celiac or they're allergic to corn. Um, so I've come up with an awesome Phillies allergy-friendly Not Your Mama's Meatloaf. Now I'm warning all the meatloaf lovers out there that once you have this meatloaf, you won't like yours. I'm not dissing your mom's recipe. It may be good, but th this is just it's awesome. Ugh, little ego stroke there. And the fact that it's allergy friendly just makes it that much better. And for people who don't like meatloaf, you will love my meatloaf. Again, ego stroke. Okay, are you ready? Very simple ingredients. Let's get started. This is great for people that don't like to touch meat. You can make it all in your mixer. We have four ounces of white cheddar gluten rice crackers. You can use any type. I like the white cheddar in this one. I have eight ounces of regular Philadelphian cream cheese. Philadelphia cream cheese is great. It's all natural. We have three tablespoons of bagel. Basil. <laughs> Two teaspoons of ground clove. Three teaspoons of rosemary. And, and that was three teaspoons of basil, not bagel. <laughs> we have four teaspoons of minced garlic. I have one cup of ketchup, can't forget the ketchup. I have two, um, I call these large um, red onions over here because otherwise we get really, really small ones. So about, about a cup of onions. I have two pounds of meat. I have one can of regularly diced, nothing to them, um, tomatoes. I have one Yes, zucchini. One, um, two carrots. And then we have one and a half cups of, for the topping of ketchup. Use the food processor on our crackers. You can see all of this is ground up really good in the food processor. I've really liked using rice crackers in a lot of my breading. It gives it a little bit more crisp if you're frying stuff. But if you don't have any allergies, you don't have to use the rice crackers, you're more than welcome to use regular old brick rolls. <laughs> Get to the sneaky part. Because we have a lot of kids that are really picky on vegetables. So that's where I add in the zucchini and carrots. Because um, it's also great too if you're on a budget because this will help make the meat go further. Go each one so I'm not sure you're just really going to shred it really, really fine. I can't get it to work. <laughs> the carrot and the zucchini all together. You're going to put that in your mixer. Then you're going to take a pound of your ground meat and put it in. And I have this really awesome star masher and you just want to mash it up a little bit at first. Oh my goodness. I forgot the eggs! Pause it! Everything's fine. You add your eggs. Four eggs. <laughs> and the reason why you want your eggs in there is it helps mix it all together because the meat's really dry right now. We're gonna get the meat in there and mix it up. Again, we're not touching anything. And then we're gonna add in, which, come over here with the fast camera girl. You can see it's pretty good in there, and we're gonna add the other one in there. Ugh. And the reason why you wanna do this first when you're using your mixer is if you don't, it's gonna be really hard and stuff will fly everywhere. Not that that's ever happened, ever. Only once. <laughs> it was no fun cleaning meatloaf off the ceiling. <laughs> okay, we got that really good mixed. We're going to add in our ketchup. We're going to add in the tomatoes. We're going to add the onions, but since I already got my food processor right here, I'm just going to do it in there. Ooh. Don't have to cut them, but oh, I still might cry. Ketchup 
in there and the can of diced tomatoes. I'm going to mix it a little bit again with my meat masher and now I'm going to get it let it mix up really good. But first we're going to add da -da -da, the cream cheese in. Then we're going to put the mixer in Because the rest is all dry seasonings. Oh, except for the garlic. Get all the wet stuff in first. Alrighty, there's my little lid. You want to start off real slow. See, it doesn't fly everywhere. Then we're going to add in our rosemary while it's mixing. Our cloves. Our basil. Not basil. And our rice from crackers. the zucchinis in there and you can see where the carrot bits are in there but I'm gonna get this cleaned off and put in a 9 by 13 dish you don't need to grease it and uh, you can if you don't if you're afraid it's gonna stick you're more than welcome but once we put the ketchup on top you won't see it and you can see it's just mixed together beautifully oh it smells so good oh, just this is not your mama's meatloaf this is Philly's meatloaf it's just awesome Alrighty, we put it on the pan. You can see all the way through that this pudding, mixing meatloaf in a mixer is just amazing. Let me tell you. Just take your ketchup and you put a nice coat of ketchup. And this is Hunt's ketchup. It's gluten free and corn syrup free. See, when you cover it with the ketchup, then you don't see the carrots or the zucchini bits. And zucchini truly takes the flavor of whatever you're cooking. So you, they, they won't know because they won't taste it. It will take all the flavor. And same for the carrots. Carrots just helps it go a little bit further and it gives a little bit extra vitamins in there. It's going to cook for just about... 45 minutes, I want to say half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on your oven, please check, okay, because I don't want to tell you 45 minutes and your oven cooks it in half an hour and it's all brown and burnt and then be like, this ain't like my mama's, or it could be, well, it's just like mom's, <laughs> but hopefully your mom doesn't burn things, because remember, when you burn, you learn, it's okay to make mistakes, not that I ever do any at all, about 375, um, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit for the states, about 200 Celsius <laughs> here in Germany. Like I said, remember, check your meatloaf. Mine cooked just a half an hour. It was already starting to get darker on the edges. In that time, I did some salad and I just did my twice baked potatoes in the microwave and then I mash them up. Now for the meatloaf. Oh, it is so good. Okay. You have no idea how good this smells. Oh, you so need smell vision. It's just a little hot because it just came out of the oven. Which too, when you let it set, um, because I have very, very hungry children, um, when you let it set for a good five minutes before you cut it, it will be more solid. It won't be so loose. But let's... Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh. When you make meatloaf with Philadelphia cream cheese, it's a whole new experience. The cloves, oh, just, oh. everyone thinks that cloves are supposed to be in sweet food. Psh, psh, nah. Well, this is my spin on meatloaf. And it's not like your mama's. Whether you love your mama's or you hate your mama's meatloaf, not talking bad about their about mama's, because I'm a mama too. Enjoy, this is some awesome, uh, not your mama's meatloaf. Mm, 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 mm. Dinner! 